To understand the challenges Africa faces, there is a need for improved data collection and analysis. Now, the Africa Country Benchmark Report ranks African countries based on 19,000 data points and 34 indices and ranking systems. I spoke to Jonathan Mundell, CEO of In on Africa, about how this report helps us better understand the continent. Take a look. My, my company is In on Africa, IOA, and historically we're a research consultancy company focusing comprehensively on the African continent. And over the years we've discovered increasingly the need for good data for our clients who are both within the private and the public sector um, in order to make good decisions. And so with that need, we've brought together as much data as possible that we see as reliable, both from the research that we've been doing over the last decade, but also from the various indexes and ranking systems and also the key indicators across the continent to try and bring that together to provide a, a truly comprehensive and holistic understanding of each of the 54 African states, um, which we've now compiled into our Africa Country Benchmark Report. Now, from what I've gathered so far, I mean, the bottom line is Africa still has a, lo a long way to go in terms of putting out uh, accurate, timely data that can add value to uh, economy, social systems, uh, even politics. But uh, you did cite uh, a wide ranging uh, number of challenges that Africa still has to uh, deal with or at least overcome before uh, you know, is data can be taken seriously. You pointed to your political influence. You talked about the fact that many of the data coming out is just downright unreliable. But I'd like you to just flesh that out for us. What do you see as some of the key challenges uh, facing Africa's data systems right now? There's, there's various challenges to Africa and, and globally um, in terms of the data revolution and the importance of data to good decision making in business and within economies and political development. Um, but those challenges range from political influence um, to um, funders versus um, politicians and governments having different priorities in terms of what needs to be done with data, what needs to be prioritized. There's, there's um, not enough of a, a climate um, for um, really valuing good statistics and good data. Often decisions are made um, without really delving deeply into um, the core issues and that's really what we've tried to get to the crux of in the ACBR through looking at all the different aspects um, of African countries ranging from social performance, social development, all the way through to political stability and economic development. Um, but yeah, you know, the challenges are wide ranging. There's certainly a long way to go on the African continent. Um, there needs to be um, a lot more time and energy spent on collecting good data and also disseminating that data. Data is not um, made widely um, available. Um, there's, there's not very um, strong statistical systems and um, statistical distribution um, allowed for um, in Af many African countries, but there is good progress being made. Um, there's a lot of good work being done by various organizations, lots of really great research being done, um, and it's really a question of how do we use that data to inform the development of the continent. Now, you also did make some recommendations in terms of solutions. Uh, you talked about funding more and funding differently. Uh, could you explain that to us? Yeah, well, the funding, the funding more, funding differently um, is really about aligning priorities for, um, for development and sort of making sure that donors, funders, investors, the private sector, corporate companies that are expanding in Africa, companies that are, in, um, that are entering the African continent, and then also the governments are having the same conversations. And we're not working in silos in trying to move the continent forward and to maximize the potential that everybody knows that Africa has. Um, so funding more and funding differently is really a lot about aligning everybody's priorities and working towards um, unified goals. Okay, let's also talk quickly about the sustainable development goals because that's one thing. I mean, for the year 2030, it's going to rely on, uh, I mean, the attainment of it will rely on timely and accurate uh, data. So I'm wondering, how concerned are you that, uh, I mean, if we're talking about uh, 
challenges, so many, a wide-ranging uh, number of challenges still affecting Africa's, the quality of African data, and we're still trying to get, achieve the sustainable development goals for the year 2030. Uh, I'm just wondering, can we, at the end of the day, say that the data that has been, that would have been collated in that time frame would come out on the other end as one that is reliable, will add value to African nations, and of course, the overall uh, big picture of the, SG, of the sustainable development goals? Yeah, I think that if you look at it in the right perspective and you use all of the data that's coming out of the efforts that are being um, invested to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals and, um, you know, other objectives that are being set for the development of Africa, if it's looked at holistically, and I think that's one of the problems that, you know, you've got economists that are looking at economic data and you've got politicians and governments and policy developers that are looking largely at perhaps economic and political data, social development, but you need to be looking at all of the data holistically um, in order to achieve the goals and also to guide next steps. I mean, one of the reasons that we called the report the Africa Country Benchmark Report is it's about identifying the benchmarks. Who in Africa, from a country perspective, who is doing well? Why are they doing well? What, what policies are they implementing that seem to be working? And how can other countries and how can businesses learn from the, the things that are, doing, that are being done well? Um, so similarly, um, in order to drive development across sectors, um, across the private and public sector within corporate and government, you need to be looking at the data that's available to identify what's working and what's not working, where the gaps are, where the opportunities are, and what lessons can we learn from countries that are doing um, good jobs in different areas. Now, you also mentioned in your report, and I think that's also key, you mentioned that, that it shouldn't just be the responsibility of governments alone. Uh, non-governmental organizations, civil society organizations, and of course the private sector should also take ownership and be part of ensuring that data, uh, Africa, data coming out of Africa is taken seriously. I'm just wondering, do you see that happening now, that uh, concerted efforts uh, amongst these groups to ensure that you know, everyone is working together for the same goal to ensure that data from Africa is credible? Yes, definitely. And I think with the, the digital revolution in line with the data revolution, um, everybody is realizing the importance of good data and making decisions based on good data. Um, so whether it be governments using um, research that's being done and data that's being drawn from various sources to inform policy development, all the way across to governments that are investing in market research and conducting good feasibility studies, speaking to consumers, speaking to their employees, a continuous um, cycle of, of feedback and refinement. Um, I do definitely see it certainly within our business and we're working with the public and private sector across the continent um, that data is being utilized more and more. The question is um, obviously in Africa it's it's still quite difficult to get that data um, and a lot of client a lot of um, public and private sector players are having to rely on feet on the ground to collect that data and not be reliant particularly on Western institutions that have gathered data through um, perhaps only um, secondary research, but really trying to get to the nitty gritty through um, real on the ground, speaking to the, the people um, and gathering that data that you know is going to inform good decision making. Okay, Jonathan, I want to take you back to political influence because I know that that is a, a very you know, broad concern. Uh, and your report says that it's almost impossible to separate I mean, the management of data from politics. So I'm thinking if we're going to move forward and make progress, and uh, how do we, how do we um, uh, address that issue to remove the, the suspicion that will be around, I mean, this is something that has come, this is data that's come through or passed through the government. How are we sure that the numbers, uh, the books haven't been cooked or the numbers haven't been tinkered with? How do we, what is the, is there a monitoring process? How do we get away from that uh, thinking that because there has been political influence or because it's uh, come from the government, then there's reason to have suspicion? Yeah, well, look, I mean, that's a, that's a big question that I think a lot of people across the continent and, and even outside of Africa are asking, how do you how do you avoid corruption and how do you ensure that um, decisions are being made um, in the best interest of the people? Um, there has to be good policies in place at all levels. Um, there has to be um, monitoring and evaluation processes. I think they're similar to what we've said about the need for collaboration between um, civil society, um, the corporate 
world, the, the governments, politicians, um, there needs to be a unified effort to um, rid the, the continent of um, this kind of negative political influence and ensuring that we've got truly democratic governments that are always working for the good of the people. And the only way to do that is to have good policy and um, effective and efficient monitoring and evaluation processes in place at all levels. Now, you know that you conducted this um, survey of research across a you know, uh, you know number of, well, maybe most of the African con uh, countries on the continent. Does any country stand out for you as maybe a model country in terms of how they've been able to manage the data in terms of timeliness, accuracy, and just the, the overall quality of the data? Mm. So yes, we've looked at we've looked at all um, all 54 African states, and we've assessed over 19,000 data points. We've looked at all the the reputable international indexes from the EIU, the World Bank, um, ranging from uh, corruption indexes to happiness indexes, um, and then incorporated into that also statistics such as literacy levels, HIV prevalence, poverty rates. So very very broad range to give the most holistic picture of the. African continent and certainly the one country that stands out that I don't think would be a surprise to to many people is Mauritius certainly um, they came out number one on our ACBR analysis um, South Africa also performed very well they were in the top 10 out of the 54 countries across our 10 um, different um, segments that we looked at the only uh, sorry eight out of the 10 um, the only two that South Africa fell outside of the top 10 was on health and sustainability um, but Mauritius um, the southern African countries generally did very very well um, also in the top 10 overall were, were Morocco um, and uh, Libya. And I was hoping that Nigeria would be on that list because I was looking through your report I did see you mentioned the fact that uh, that um, how data accuracy affected, impacted on Nigeria's GDP, that's the rebasing. So I'm thinking mm. for the Western side of the continent, any particular, any peculiarities, what were your findings? Uh, so interestingly, Nigeria was, um, they came out 34th overall out of the 54 countries. Um, and West Africa from a regional perspective was, um, was very much aligned with the continental average. We had South Africa, uh, Southern Africa and North Africa being the top regional performers. Um, East and Central Africa overall from a regional perspective being the bottom of the scale across our business, economic, politics and society quadrants. And okay. West Africa were sort of on the middle all the way through the range. But we, we did see a lot of positive developments in the West African region moving away from um, the, the the inter interstate conflict for, um, in, in Nigeria, for example, to a lot more unified effort to try and rid okay. the region of, um, of conflict. That was Jonathan Mundell, CEO of In On Africa.